So we just formally defined the method of moments estimator and then talked about some examples uh, and some special cases of the method of moments estimator. Now we're going to define the more general, generalized method of moments estimator. The setup here is almost exactly the same. Uh, we're still going to assume that our data, those y's, x's, and z's, that set of data, are drawn from a population. But now we're going to have L moment conditions that are functions of k parameters, where L is greater than or equal to k. So we might actually have more moment conditions than we have parameters. We can never have less. If we have, if we have fewer moment conditions than parameters, we can't identify things. But if we have more, now we're gonna be in a more general case that we need to, to use GMM for. But the assumptions here are the same. We're just making assumptions about these population moment conditions. We're not making assumptions about the full distribution. Now you might ask where might these additional moment conditions come from? Well, they can come from all kinds of sources. Um, we are basically the same places that moment conditions come from. Uh, economic models have first order conditions. Well, it might be that your demand parameter, like a demand elasticity, appears in both the demand and the supply first order conditions. So then you're going to have one parameter showing up in two different, uh, two different moments. And so it's possible you could end up with some extra moments through, through something like that. Um, Maybe when you instrument, you're going to end up with more uh, moments than, uh, than parameters. If you have multiple instruments for one endogenous variable, we'll look at an example of this in the next video. Could be that you just want to ensure that some additional kind of like model fit criteria are satisfied. So maybe the predicted market share equal the realized market share. That might not be something that comes out of your economic model, but it's something that you want to ensure is, is uh, holds in, in, the, in your results. And then, you know, maybe some statistical assumptions, like in the OLS example, we just saw things like errors are orthogonal to the data. Those might impose additional uh, restrictions or additional moment conditions that aren't part of the economic model that we're starting from. So we have these L moment conditions that are functions of K parameters, and those hold an expectation in population. Just as we did with method of moments, we can replace that population expectation with the sample mean. And now we have L sample moments, L equations that are functions of our data and our parameters where we have K parameters. So now we have L, a system of L equations with K unknown parameters where L might be greater than K. Well, if L is greater than K, we simply just cannot solve and ensure that all of our equations hold. When you have more equations than unknowns, you just can't solve that system. But what we're gonna to try to do instead is we will seek to effectively get all of these sample moments as close to zero as we can simultaneously. So we can't make them all equal zero at the same time, but maybe we can make them all equal a really small number that's close to zero. So the way that we're going to formally uh, kind of define this estimator that achieves that kind of intuition that I just described is to say that the GMM estimator is going to be the set of parameters. We're once again just going to call it theta hat for consistency here. Theta hat's going to be the set of parameters that minimizes the weighted sum of squared sample moments. So to put this in math, theta hat is going to be the set of parameters that minimizes this objective function Q where Q, which is a function of theta, is going to equal this expression here. Note that in the brackets, we have our sample moments. So we're going to find those sample moments for, for a given theta. But then we have this W matrix. W is going to be an L by L positive definite weighting matrix. That's going to be in the middle. And W is going to essentially uh, weight each one of your moment conditions against one another. So it could just be an identity matrix that, that weights them all equally, but you might find, and we'll talk about reasons for this, there might be reasons why you uh, want to weight some of your moments more highly than others in trying to minimize this objective function. And so importantly, our objective function depends on this W weighting matrix. So our 
GMM estimator theta hat will also depend on that weighting matrix. We're going to need to say more about that weighting matrix, but let's first look at an example of GMM. Then we'll talk about some of the properties of the GMM estimator. And then finally, we'll think more about that weighting matrix to define the optimal weighting matrix and ultimately the optimal GMM estimator. But first, let's work through an example of GMM to help fix ideas and highlight the importance of this weighting matrix.